This is the Programming with Codia podcast. Learn to code on the iPad for the iPad. My name is Patrick Oxel, and today we'll start our journey with the first lesson, and we're going to begin with the Hello World program, which is a tradition for programmers to start with. If you haven't done so already, the first thing you will need to do is download the Codia app. You can get it right from the App Store. Once you're done, select the icon and begin. You will see a screen that looks like this for the first time when you start Codia. At the very top, there is a Getting Started section. And if you select that, there's a lot of helpful, useful information that you can use to try to figure things out. The wiki is available along with a Lua manual. Codia uses a programming language called Lua. There's also some explanation on how to use the basic editor functions inside the program. So that's a good place to start with. The other thing you'll notice is at the very top left of the screen, there's this little icon and when you select it, it sort of flips back. At the very top, there's a reference section and every command that you would ever possibly need to use in Codia is listed in here. So you can scroll through and they're broken down by different categories and you can expand them and find out exactly what each function does. And in several of them, there's a section that you can copy and paste right into your editor. So that's really useful. At the top, on the right hand side there's a search function so if you're looking for something specific you can find it there and get some more information about it. To get back you can just press the icon. You'll notice that at the top there is some sample applications already there so you can look at the code. One of them that you might have seen before is CargoBot which is an actual app on the App Store that you can download and all the code to make that run is right there. So to begin with what we're going to do is we're going to click on the add new project icon and it flips open and you give your project a name. We're gonna just call ours lesson number one to keep things simple and then press done. You'll notice that the Codia flips over and you're into the main screen of the development environment. The name that you gave your project shows up at the top. At the very top there's this tab called main which we'll talk about later but main is the very first part of any of your program that gets executed. To run your program if you go to the very bottom left hand correction right hand side there's a little run icon and if you just select it your program actually starts running now this one doesn't do a lot of useful things but you can see over in the output on the left hand side that it says hello world and we'll explain what that's doing in a few moments to get back to where your code was on the very bottom left hand side is a little back arrow and when you select that you actually get back to um, your editor. You'll notice that there's two major sections of the code. The first section is a function called setup and everything inside of this function happens once and only once and it happens at the very beginning of your program. The next function is called draw and you'll notice there's a comment just above it that says this function gets called once every frame. So Codia will try its best to run the code inside here 60 times a second so that your game looks nice and fluid. So when you're writing your code you just have to remember that anything you write here happens once and only once in setup and anything in the draw function happens 60 times a second. It keeps happening over and over and over again. And that can be really useful for when you're writing your games. 
as I mentioned this line right here is a comment and you can tell it's a comment because it has two dashes at the beginning that's for programmers to look at Codia and the Lua language actually just totally disregards that but it's really good for programmers to write comments in their program so that you can understand um, what the program is exactly doing so as I said the first what we're going to write at the very beginning was this hello world so you'll notice in the setup command there's a function called print and inside these round brackets is just the word hello world so what's happening is when you run the program on the left hand side there's this output window or sometimes called the console and that print command just sends the words hello world to the output that's going to become really useful in the near future for when we're actually writing over on this side but we're trying to debug our program so you can use the console or the output to try to help you so we're just going to go back and what we're going to do is we're actually going to add a few more comments to our program so that we can make sure that everybody understands what our program is going to be doing so we're now back at the editor and just under lesson number one I'm gonna add a couple more lines of comment You'll notice as soon as I place my cursor on the screen the regular keyboard that you're used to on the iPad pops up but there's also this extra line of keys along the top and those are helpful when you're coding the one over on the far right is the run arrow just that we used before at the bottom of the screen so that's helpful so the first comment we're gonna write is who actually wrote this program I'm actually going to select one of the special keys now so you'll notice a little flyout screen that shows up and we can actually get a semicolon or sorry a full colon so as I said the first comment is just going to be who actually wrote the program and that's useful for when you're looking at code later on so you can find the person that actually wrote it the next thing I'm going to write is the date the program is written which is always useful so that you can remember when this program is from the third one I use with my students and it just explains what course it's for because several of my students take several courses with me so it's helpful that I understand what course they're actually talking about when they write the code and the last one is just going to be a short brief explanation of what exactly this program does so this one is just saying that this program displays hello world so it's really good convention to just make sure that you have a comment header at the very top of your program so that people know exactly what's going on what I'm going to do now is actually go into setup and we're gonna add another comment What I'm going to put here is a command that will ensure that the uh, app that we're creating is in landscape mode and the reason I'm doing this is most games actually show up in landscape so you'll notice as I start to type just above the keyboard there's a suggestion that pops up and the suggestion is actually the one that we're going to be using and it's supported orientations 
So you can actually just touch on that and it will actually fill in the rest of the words for you, which is really handy. So in other programming languages, this is known as IntelliSense. I'm going to put a pair of brackets around and I'm going to put in the command landscape any. So what this is going to do is force our application to actually have an orientation of landscape, either on the left or the right hand side. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move down to the lower section and in the draw function you will notice that there's two commands. One is the background and that sets the background color for our project. So if you actually just touch where these three numbers are, you'll notice that a little color picker shows up and you can actually use that to pick your color if you not familiar with using RGB numbers. So I'm just going to pick mine to be blue. And you'll notice that the red, green, and blue numbers change and it's added a fourth one which is how intense the color is. So it's going to have zero red, zero green, and 255 blue and the intensity is going to be 255 or the alpha. Under where it says do your drawing here, what we're going to do this time is we're going to write in a command so that the words hello world actually show up as text but that they show up on the right hand side. So we're going to use the function called text and we're going to put it in brackets and inside quotes we're going to write what we want to see show up on the screen. So we want to see the world, the words hello world. There's optional parameters that you need to put in and what this is is the actual location of where the text is going to show up. So I'm going to put in the number 500 400 and what that means is the first number is how far from the bottom right hand side or the X coordinate the text is going to start and the second number 400 is going to be how far from the bottom moving upwards that we want our text to show up. So if you remember from your math class back in high school it's an ordered pair so 500 and 400 is sort of the best way to look at it. And if you press run, you can see that our background screen will turn blue and we'll get the little words, hello world, showing up on our screen. So there's our hello world that actually showed up on the screen. There's lots of other things that you can do, including increasing the font size or changing the font itself. And we're going to go back to our code and we're actually going to do that. So here we are back on our code and I'm just going to delete the section that says stroke width. What that is is if I'm drawing a line or some kind of uh, primitive shape it's how thick the line is and since we're just drawing text right now we don't need that so I'm just going to get rid of it. Next command I'm going to put in is fill which is actually what color our font is going to be. So you'll notice as soon as you type fill and put the round brackets, you get a nice little, um, it shows up a little gray. So you can select it and then you can use your color picker again. And you can specify exactly the color that you want your font to be. The next thing 
I'm going to use is font size and this just accepts a number and is how many points large you want your font to be and the last one I'm going to use is just the command font and what it does is it lets you select the actual type of font that you would like so once you have font and you have your round brackets you can touch the little green spot and you get a list of all the different fonts that come embedded right into Codia and you can just select one of those so there's the little list and you can scroll through and you can just select the one that you actually want and it will fill the name in for you so I'm going to press the little run arrow again and you will notice that when the screen comes up that our font is a lot bigger and that the font has changed just going to go back to our code and finish off a little bit of housekeeping under supported orientations I'm actually going to add in a couple commands just so that in the future when you're typing code you start off fresh with the first command is no fill so you're gonna have no fill color defined the next one is no smooth which just means that your lines are going to be aliased so they're going to be drawing you can draw nice small thin lines and you can see them properly the next command is no stroke so that we don't have any color or width for sorry width not color for our lines and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this command called push style which just takes the commands that I just gave it the no fill no smooth and no stroke and pushes them onto the stack for our styles so that we can use that and that's just a really good convenient way to make sure that when we're actually in draw we know exactly what we're doing and none of the other um, leftover types of commands for our font or our color or anything like that show up so if we run our program you'll notice that nothing's really changed but that's just really nice coding style and that is going to be our lesson for today to get out of the editor and go back to the main menu in Codia when you exit your program and just go back into the editor there's a little arrow on the bottom left hand corner or sorry an X at the bottom left hand corner and if you press that it'll just flip you back and you will notice that you now have a tile called lesson one and that was our hello world program that we did